My name is Matt, welcome back to the shop. And today, um, I was asked this a couple of days ago, um, and it's a very simple question. So we'll start off with simple videos and then move on from there as usual. And it is, the, the, the question was, what is valve overlap? In the most simplistic way of explaining it, that is valve overlap. <laughs> so what we've got here is we've got all four states um, of the valve system. It took me, let's just say, <laughs> longer than 15 minutes than I was willing to spend on it. So longer than 15 minutes, because I wasn't expecting to do this in like two minutes. To actually get, I've actually locked the cams. Um, to actually get the cams to lock in this exact position. Um, because one cam wants to roll over, blah, 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 blah. So, <laughs> forgetting all that. Uh, we have all four states. So on this side, at the, oh, at the top, so we'll call this... This is actually cylinder number four, but fuck, oh no, fuck it, it starts cylinder number one. So cylinder number one down here, uh, we have the intake valves open and the exhaust valves closed. So this is the intake stroke. So this is state one. State two here on cylinder number two is overlap. This is where the intake valves and the exhaust valves are open. State three on cylinder number three is where the... Uh, both the intake and the exhaust valves are all closed, so this is all shut. So this will be on the power stroke. And cylinder number four is state four, which is the in, the exhaust valves are open and the intake valves are closed. So what we mean by overlap is a state in the condition. So in other words, it's like a, it's like an engine, right? An engine can be switched off or on. It is a state. So overlap isn't a physical thing, per se. Um, it's actually an interaction between two different things. So you can't have overlap on your intake valves or your exhaust valves. Um, there's no such thing. It's the interaction between the intake valves and the exhaust valves. Now, you can make any engine have overlap. It might kill itself somewhere else as well. And if it's an interference engine, it's going to fuck itself. But um, you can force any engine to have overlap. It just means that both the intake and the exhaust valves are open at the same time. Um, that's all it is. Now, it's one of these things is overlap where people just think if they have more overlap at higher RPMs, they're just going to get more power or increase the duration of their power curve. It, it, uh, no, no, it doesn't work that way. Like with everything, you know, it's a fucking seesaw. It's a balancing act. Too much one way and she falls over. Too much the other way she falls over. So basically the whole point here is is as the exhaust valves are closing, so the, they were here, they're now trying, they're going from this state to this state. As they are closing, well actually no, they're going from this state to this state. As they are closing, the intake valves will open and um, as you can see it's a very small gap it's not crazily big or anything um, because these are closing these are beginning to open and as they do this um, the fresh charge it it's more the other way it's not the fresh charge go, wants to really go in because there's nothing pushing it unless it's forced induction what happens here is that the exhaust gases are already most the vast majority of them are fucked off out of the cylinder so when we're at this position here the gases are on their way out they're all on the way out and the last bits are on their way out so there's a flow a tendency to flow from the inside of the cylinder outwards and the reason why is because the exhaust gases are hot unfortunately and they've expanded out and the flow is just generally that way. So the momentum of the gases and the pistons on its way up, so it's basically forcing it out. It's and it's compressing it into this region and that's the way out. So the gases are on the way out this way. So the general tendency is this way. There's a an inertia in a sense, a mean inertia to go that way. There's a resistance to want to go any other direction um, due to the con the momentum, the momentum, momentum. Um, so basically what happens is as soon as you open your intake ports, 
the exhaust gases still want to go out, the, you know, they're on that way, and the exhaust, the intake charge, because you're about to do the intake, they also want to flow in. So you get this cross flow where basically it comes out of the intake and into the exhaust. Now, with ported injection, this is just bad, right? It's just bad. We're just pissing fuel out. So it's a balancing act between, and the reason why I want to do this is because we have a combustion chamber volume. It's this volume here and this, you know, this volume here underneath this. And if we don't get all of the gases out, then our volumetric efficiency can't be 100%. You know what I mean? Or because some of it is going to be exhaust gases. And exhaust gases are, well, the the sp spent air, not entirely, but near enough. And if them exhaust gases are in here, then it's not going to, you know, you can't d replace that with intake charge. So you want to kind of purge the cylinder. You want to push out. And it's what diesels are excellent at because they've got direct injection. And one of the benefits of using direct injection is that you can basically just waste a bit of charge just pushing the exhaust gases out. It means that now your cylinder is hopefully purged of all the exhaust gases and you're ready to rock and roll. And then you draw down, fill the cylinder as much. Because of inertial filler, cylinder filling and because of all the dynamic analysis that's been done on the bench they can add extra fuel when they know they get to certain rpms where the um oh, overlap actually really do start to take effect the fact of the matter is, is overlap at low revs can be a bad thing and just beyond your peak torque, it can also be a bad thing. So like I said, there's this balancing act of losing fuel out the hole or keeping it in your cylinder versus how much you can purge the cylinder, so on and so on. Um, now, people, as someone did say to me once, they said, well, why can't you just let air in and then halfway through the intake stroke spray your injectors? The problem with that is that you're not going to get mixing properly and you're not going to get... You're going to get some, it's just about mixture. If you start doing stuff like that, it needs time to vaporise. You need to, um, you know, spray the back of your valves. And that's where a lot of this vaporisation comes from. Vaporisation is two things, dropping pressure, um, you know, dropping surrounding pressure, or it's to do with heat, it's to do with energy of your liquid that you want to turn into a gas. So the fact of the matter is, is, yes, it's low pressure at first, but then the pressure starts to go back up, which would make it basically condensate. The best way to get fuel to vaporise is to just add in heat, you know, and the valves are already hot, so why not cool them down and rob that heat for your fuel? Um, it's one of the problems they have with um, GDI, gasoline direct injection, is the problem of this mixing scenario diesel it's not so much of a problem because diesel's a bit different and we'll eventually get to them videos but because bikes and diesels don't really go together that well this is kind of like a, a talking about diesels is like talking about steam engines it's good now and then we'll chuck a few videos out but nothing major um not at the moment anyway there's found too much other shit to do any road um so you can literally see in this, in all four stages, you can literally see all four stages of the cams, uh, of the valves, you know, intake, exhaust open, all four open and all four closed. Hope that makes sense and I'll see you in a bit.